Greetings everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your host Captain Rye and today's YouTube video has got me back in the tier 10 French battle cruiser, the Henry. Now, this battle is pretty good and showcases some excellent qualities of the Henry, but more importantly, this battle shows you how to engage with and break contact with a superior force, and I do mean a vastly superior force. As the battle gets underway, it's Ridge, it's a standard battle mode, and I am headed way off over here onto the flank. I'm going to try and use these islands for cover. That seems to be the best course of action in the Henry is to find some extra thick rock armor and go ahead and hide behind that and then just rain down high explosive hell from on high at maximum ranges. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to head over here. But pay attention to the minimap as the battle gets underway. You'll notice that every single ship on my team is headed off to the opposite side of the ridge line. So pretty much it's now just me over here. So I start slowing down as I come up to these islands. I'm being very cautious. There's at least one destroyer but they do have a number of cruisers and battleships, and I don't want to be caught out here by myself, especially with all my support running the other way. And that's when I spot my first problem, and then a second problem. Okay, so I am now here, not with just one cruiser, but with multiple and battleships. This is a serious issue. I switch over to the armor piercing, and I'm going to land some hits on that... Um, Minotaur there and do Citadel him you know remember what I was saying in the last video that the 240 millimeter armor piercing on this will pretty much penetrate Minotaurs from every angle and if you present more than 10% of your broadside I am gonna Citadel you now I've got this problem that I've got a Minotaur back there but also I've got a number of large angry gunned battleships and I'm alone I'm pretty much the only thing out here for them to shoot at, so I'm going to go ahead. I use this island to get it between me and those ships. I've got my speed boost up, and I'm going to start running. I'm not going to continue firing because I have a lower detectability range. When I don't fire, and I'm going to use that as an advantage with the speed of this ship, and I'm just going to pretty much run away. Now, I've asked the team for help. I'm trying to flag it on the map because, as you can see here, they've pretty much all gone that direction. Now, there is one battleship, and I want to say a big thank you to him. He did, at the very least, see the situation that was going on over here and turned and is going to bow on and engage. The only problem with that is like myself, he's now isolated with that ridge line between him and the team, and that's going to result in the enemy carrier, as you can see the planes on the minimap, is pretty much just going to be able to go in and pick on him with impunity. Now, speaking of carriers in this game, take a look at where our carrier is. He's up there behind an island. That's not unusual for carriers, but he's actually continuing to head this direction. He's not changing course, and that's a serious issue because that's where all of the angry enemy guns are. That includes the Minotaur. That includes several battleships up to and including a Kerfurst and a Yamato. Now I am detected by aircraft so I go ahead and I start opening up again. I might as well get shots out if I'm already visible to the enemy. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn, angle away, and still manage to get hit by a battleship that does Citadel me. Could have been worse, it could have been deleted then and there, which was fortunate that I wasn't. And going to continue to run for cover behind this island. Now the enemy carrier's planes have pulled away, so if I stop firing, I should drop off detectability, and yes, that is the case. If you find yourself in this exact kind of situation, the best thing you can do, stop firing, drop off detectability, use your concealment as a cruiser or a destroyer, and then run for cover. Run for the safety of your friendly ship, so that at least you're not the only thing for the enemy to shoot at in that direction. And, if at all possible, try and get behind some cover before opening up again. Now, speaking of opening up, there was a broadside Kerfurst down there. 
and I did open up on him, and I did manage to set him on fire, and if he's going to let that burn for a little bit, as most battleships tend to do, that's going to be good for me, and it's going to be some free damage that I'm going to earn here. Now, finally, back behind cover, no longer detected, we've lost our friendly battleship, and that was the battleship who turned, he moved to engage, keep the attention focused away from me. So, again, thanks to that battleship captain, he definitely did help me get out of there as quickly as possible. If you don't have that, your best bet is to just continue to run and to not fire at all. But if you do have that, definitely, definitely an advantage. So now I'm behind an island, I can go ahead and I can start shooting at these battleships. See, these battleships are concentrated on other things, and since I've got an island between me and the vast majority of guns that have pushed up that side of the map, I don't necessarily have to worry about getting broadsided by those ships. Again, paying attention to the minimap, look at that carrier. The enemy carrier, our friendly carrier, has now spotted the enemy, Harborovsk. And we know there's a Minotaur up there as well, and there is also a Hipper pushing up that side. And that carrier has now got himself in a world of hurt because Harborovsk, and the Minotaur both know that he's up there, and they're going to go after him with kind of no restraint. They're going to start pushing him. So I'm actually going to start backing up here because I've got the gun range. I can actually cover this carrier. And as you can see there, he's not turning back towards the fleet. He's actually trying to turn away, and it's almost like he's going to go try and run for the basic corner of the map. And really, at this point, I'm just going to use him as cannon fodder to distract the enemy while I rain hellfire down on top of them. I switch over to the armor piercing because the Minotaur is also chasing that carrier and it's really coming down to a competition between the Minotaur and the Harborovsk as to who's going to get the kill on that carrier. But because the Minotaur is chasing down that carrier, he's sailing in a nice straight line broadside onto me. And remember what I said about Presenting more than 10% of your broadside in a Minotaur to a Henry? Yeah. Get armor piercing out there and manage to smack him for a Citadel, and that's gonna hurt him. Now, he's probably wondering what exactly just hit him, but he's gonna continue to tunnel vision in on that carrier. He does have broadside to me, and if he really wanted to, he could return the favor here. But again, manage to penetrate on that Minotaur. No matter the angle, I'm going to penetrate you. It's going to happen just give in and let that be the case. More penetrations on him and I'm going to continue to whittle him down. I'm trying desperately to finish him off before he and the Harborovs can finish off the carrier. Maybe if I can get him, I can give the carrier just that little bit extra time to try and escape or something. But I mean, really, look where the carrier is. He's not escaping. He's pretty much got himself into a back corner with no exit, no exit plan. Managed to nail that Minotaur uh, yet again. I am just racking up the Citadels on this guy. He's now very low health. I think he and the Harborovsk are trying desperately to finish off that carrier before he dies. They do, goes to the Harborovsk, and I finish off that Henry, or that Minotaur there. So, that Minotaur is dead. He's dead, Jim. And now, I've got a hipper coming around that island. I still have the armor piercing loaded. I fire off shots there. Do manage to hit mostly ricochet there and over penetrations. The hipper does have a little bit better armor than the Minotaur or any of the British light cruiser line. Now I'm moving forward here again. I'm gonna go ahead and use that island as solid rock cover to defend against the angry big battleship guns. That's when I spot the enemy Yamato. Now he's up there. He's not moving very quickly. I'm going to go ahead, switch back over to the high explosive, and start raining hellfire down upon him, because battleships love being set on fire, right? It's their, like, favorite thing in the game. So, I'm going to continue. I'm going to keep paying attention to the backside of this island, because I know there was that harbor off up there. I know there's a hipper up there, and I want to ensure that if either of those two comes around the backside of this island, I am ready to go. Now, I'm detected as I kind of back up there, that tells me that Harborovsk is definitely up here, and he's definitely within that detectability range. Not close enough for me to see him yet, but I know he's pushing up that way, so I'm going to get moving. I'm going to use the mobility that this ship has at speed. I mean, remember again, with the speed boost, 
only the Harboroths can actually chase me down and only for a limited amount of time. Gonna get more high explosive shots out here onto these battleships. With any luck, I can set even more fires because, of course, fires make me happy getting those witherers a medal I don't usually get until I'm in this ship. And going to keep myself in a position to defend the base. Again, looking at the minimap, I'm the only one back here. I'm covering the rear guard now against at least one hipper, one battleship, and one destroyer. So, while the rest of the team is putting pressure on the enemy base, remember, the enemy could start rallying back and they could definitely wreck them. They could delay them long enough. I go ahead, I pop my hydroacoustic. The downside to the Henry here is that it doesn't have a scout, so there's no scout fighter, there's no spotter here, so I can't have that up and see what's coming up behind that island. Pop that hydro just in case there are torpedoes coming at me, you never know. I'm going to try and get up close to this island, and with any luck, that's when the Harborovsk pops up. Now, he's very close, of course, so I've got high explosive loaded. This is going to be good for me because it's going to put some hurt onto him, and I'm getting my ship turned hard. I want to get these torpedoes away at him because they'll do damage and of course if he's gonna get torpedoes away at me this could be a problem keep that turn up come on come on but you know what I'm going a lot faster than I think he expected me to as I straighten out from that turn managed to hit him again but it looks like I'm gonna hit him with a torpedo and finish him off and that's when I've got the hipper on the opposite side now that hipper takes a big old hit from a friendly battleship back behind me who's I think finally realize that, oh, hey, wait a second, we've got one tier 10 cruiser up here facing off against all of these bad guys putting pressure on our base. Yeah, we're winning down at their base, but, you know, again, that CV could come in and just keep resetting them while the enemy team captures. Have the armor piercing loaded, the armor piercing doing a good job there as it manages to penetrate, and I do manage to hit that hipper with a torpedo, but he immediately puts out the flooding and puts the fire out but he doesn't have any health left. Rear gun loaded up again and finish him off with the armor piercing. Switch back over to high explosive because now I've got a Bismarck to deal with to try and burn down. And sure enough, the carrier managed to reset the base capture progress, just as I suspected might be the case. He does manage to do it, but now there's only two ships left in the game on the enemy team, and that's their carrier and that's their Bismarck. And both of these guys are tier eight. And I still have at least half my health and still have my speed boost active and another one available. So I'm going to go ahead and keep getting shots off here as I try to turn in. And hopefully this Bismarck decides not to pay any particular special attention to me as I try desperately to set him on fire. Now he is going to go ahead and shoot at me, but I'm already angling pretty well here as those shots come in. Yep, they're going to miss mostly fly off to the starboard side of me and that's partly due to the speed boost because a lot of battleships just really do not know how to compensate for the drifting as well as the faster speeds they tend to fire short on those shots still trying desperately to get him on fire here it would be nice to finish him off with that fire but pay attention to the base cap progress we are really just capping rapidly we don't have to at this point i mean we're winning massively on points we have the ship's lead we could just go hunt everything down if we so wished it's not like the old standard battle where if you fail to cap and fail to kill all you end up in a draw now i do manage to set that bismarck on fire in multiple places so he is going to continue to burn here as we near the end of the battle and i say the end of the battle because yeah we're pretty much capping out it's not going to be any other result other than capping out so at this point how much damage can i do take a big hit there on the bow from that bismarck but i'm going to survive this battle he's going to survive this battle and their carrier is going to survive this battle look at that 148,000 damage done look at all the citadels i managed to hit and hey i managed to hit two torpedoes including one on a destroyer that's always fun and three kills no special awards though surprisingly enough i didn't earn a high caliber i didn't earn a witherer didn't earn a confederate didn't even earn a dreadnought or a devastating strike so a little bit disappointing and of course lack of awards there is what's going to result in me only being second on the team for XP earned. But hey, you know what? I came in just barely behind the number one guy, the Yamato there. Still though, 2,100 base XP and even the carrier that got himself killed by not paying attention to the map. Yeah, everybody on the team, including him, earned at least 1,000 base XP while nobody on the enemy team 
earned even a thousand base XP. Anyway, that's it for today's video, folks. I hope you liked it and enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below. If you'd like to get semi-regular channel news and updates, as well as my live streaming schedule posted for the week, you can do so by liking and following me on Facebook. If you'd like to help support me in the channel, as well as gain some access to some replays here and some other perks, you can become my supporter on Patreon. Any contribution level helps me greatly. If you've got a replay like this one that you'd like to see featured on my channel, you can do so by sending it to my email. And as mentioned before, if you'd like to watch me play World of Warships, among other games, live, you can follow me on Twitch. You can find the links for all of those in the video description down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Captain Rye, signing off.